Hi, I'm Josh Grassman. I'm a plastics process engineer for Angle Machinery, and today I'm going to talk to you about improving your process. More exactly, common problems with your non-return valve. A common problem that I see with customers is inconsistent closing, leakage, and excessive wear of the non-return valve. What does a non-return valve do? During the injection phase, the non-return valve closes and prevents the backflow of material over the screw. Because the material can only flow in one direction, the pressure and the movement of the injection unit can now be transferred into the material and then into the mold. During the plasticizing phase, the non-return valve opens and allows the flow of material to the front of the screw. How does a non-return valve work? A non-return valve has some sort of moving component that can open and close and a sealing surface that the moving component can seal against. A couple of the most common non-return valves are a three-piece style and a ball check style. The picture shows each style in its open and closed position. Each uses a very different means of sealing, but each has an advantage over the other in certain applications. When the machine is in the plasticizing phase, material will push the non-return valve open and allow the flow of material to the front of the screw. The video illustrates a normal injection molding cycle. It shows the movement of material in both the injection phase and the plasticizing phase. The most important thing of this video is that the check ring stays in the open position until the injection cycle. If the non-return valve never closes, your part will be extremely short and your peak injection pressure will be much lower when compared to a normal part. Also, you may have problems with your screw plasticizing due to the fact that material is being forced back over the flights. A more common problem that I see at customers in their injection molding process is that the, there is variation in the time the non-return valve takes to close. This could cause the parts to alternate between flash, short, and full. Some part designs will show this variation more than others. Most of the time, hold pressure will absorb these variations if they are minimal. In the example, the last to fill on the part is a small tab. This is kind of worst case scenario for showing variations in the closing behavior of a non-return valve. The easiest way to tell if your non-return valve is leaking during production is to keep an eye on your production data. Some of the variations that you will see is variations in your cushion volume and shot volume. It can be helpful to record these on the initial process startup so that you have something to look back on months or years down the road when you suspect a problem. In the example, you can see variations in shot volume and cushion from shot to shot. The production part you are injection molding could be randomly short or full. How to tell if your non-return valve is leaking when the press is not in production. First, you could block off the nozzle tip and try to manually inject your screw forward. If your screw moves forward without much resistance, this could be a sign that your non-return valve can no longer hold pressure. If your non-return valve does seal, it could point to a processing issue which would need to be addressed. The next way is to set up a process making short shot parts. You could keep 10 or so parts and calculate the percent variation in those parts. Usually 5% is considered normal, but some processes might need a tighter tolerance. Most of the time, these are processes that do not use holding pressure. The last way is to manually remove the flange and check your barrel and non-return valve for wear. Here are a few things, process related and wear related, that can affect the closing behavior of a non-return valve. Decompression after plasticizing, back pressure at the end of plasticizing, injection speed, barrel temperatures, non-return valve and screw design, wear of the components, and the viscosity of the material. Some things you can try to get your non-return valve to close more repeatedly. The first thing to check is that your screw is capable of giving you a homogeneous melt consistently. If your screw design, screw parameters, and material combination 
are unable to melt consistently in the allotted cycle time, then there will always be a problem with your non-return valve closing consistently. In the example, you can see that the sealing surface of the check ring has impressions of non-melted pellets physically holding the non-return valve open during the cycle. This is an issue that must first be addressed. A change in screw design or barrel temperature profile might be required. Some things to try to get your non-return valve to close more repeatably is to increase your decompression distance. What this does is create an area of low pressure in front of the screw. This differential in pressure from the front of the screw to the back of the screw will help close your check ring during the injection phase. You can also try increasing the decompression speed or a different non-return valve or screw design may be required. If you have any specific questions about injection molding or processing, visit our website or shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you.